pediatric dental clinic. Hi, fresh out of college, I decided to start my own exclusive pediatric dental practice. Having visited a few clinics before, I had observed how pleasant and colorful they were, not giving off the vibes of the conventional medical center. Designing a clinic that is child and parent friendly required skills that got me thinking about where to start. The cover page of an old diary that said the roadmap to your dreams helped me take my next step toward building my dream clinic. My first step was to find the ideal location. The prerequisites of the preferred location would be a ground or first floor, clearly visible and accessible to families with sufficient parking space. The next step was to sketch out a layout of the number of rooms to be incorporated into the setup so that the required area could be decided. The essential components of a child-friendly clinic are a reception area or front desk, a waiting area for both parents and children, a play area connected to the waiting area, a sterilization room and lab, a consultation room, a restroom, a well-isolated and spacious dental operatory to accommodate the dental chair, a dental assistant, and a parent if required, with a lavish working area for the dentist. The entrance and exit to the operatory must follow the horseshoe traffic pattern, where the child is called to the operatory room from one door and exits by the second. Step 3 was designing each section of the clinic, which must be done keeping young and special children in mind. The reception area must be bright, well-lit, and welcoming for the child. Children have a place memory. They don't go back to a place if they've had an unpleasant experience, like a stereotypical hospital. Therefore, an area of child's interest with pleasant themes and vibrant colored walls always imparts good vibes. Next to the reception is a waiting area for parents and kids. This is especially useful for children who are big enough to engage in smarter games and books. Soft, engaging music in this area is an add-on to the pleasant environment, which makes the waiting time interesting. A happy and engaged child is more cooperative on the dental chair when compared to a bored and anxious one. Next is a well-designed theme-based play area as children prefer to move around and are unable to sit still for long periods. A window for the child to look out of, enough space to run around and a few toys to fidget with help keep them busy. Additionally, a few interesting games and an aquarium can be set up. Next, we have the consultation room. A clinic must always have a separate room from the operatory confined to study models and other educational posters. This room is mainly utilized to discuss the treatment options for counseling and educating the parents and children. An additional room called the Preventive Care Spa can be planned for dental nurses to carry out oral health education. This room provides a relaxing environment where the child interacts with a tooth-friendly team and at the same time is also educated about oral hygiene. Children are happy when they receive little gifts as an appreciation or motivation to improve their oral health. The next area is the sterilization and lab area. This room should be accessible to the clinical assistant and be sophisticated enough to meet the requirements of the clinic. A sufficient number of instruments and mouth drops to treat even a large patient. Volume must be planned earlier. Storage cabinets for sterilized instruments should be pre-planned. Another area that we usually fail to focus on is waste management and storage. This area must be kept out of sight and out of reach of children. Finally, let us discuss the design of the most crucial part of the clinic, the operatory. The dentist has the complete authority to design his operatory according to preferred treatment convenience. The entrance to the operatory can be through the consultation room. At least one, or preferably two quite soundproof operatories should be set up for performing lengthy complicated procedures. One area of the operatory must have glass windows to provide visual access to parents. 
having cartoon-themed colorful dental chairs look less intimidating and more welcoming to children, thereby making dental procedures easier. The equipment utilized must be exclusively for pediatric dentistry to fit well into the oral cavity of the child. To allow free working space, the chair must be positioned in a comfortable area with at least six feet of working circumference. The working area must contain minimal instruments that are necessary for the procedure and the rest must be kept out of the child's sight. Brush-up sinks at graduated heights at the child's reach, hard surface floors under operatory chairs, carpeted trash discs, and foot-controlled or automatic fan needs for operatory sinks can be incorporated for a child-friendly environment. Additionally, having an audio-visual aid with headphones in the operatory helps in the management of the child. A few clinics have neat attention getters incorporated into the ceiling so that a child can watch while lying on the chair. The room can also have a corner for soft toys, hand puppets and other toys that help distract the child. The most important part of designing the operatory is not to have any negative stimuli or unpleasant things around. The pieces of equipment that make unpleasant noise and have bad smells must be replaced. Now that the fundamental design of the clinic was taken care of, I wondered what to do next. This brings me to step 4. Designing my attire. Children tend to be afraid of doctors in white coats, as they associated it with previous unpleasant experiences such as immunizations. Therefore, a pleasant coloured casual scrub can be designed for a friendly approach. With this, the basic planning of my clinic was done. There are a few additional prerequisites for the smooth functioning of a paediatric dental clinic. First of all, a friendly receptionist must be appointed at the front office to receive the child, talk about things the child likes and show him around. During the conversation, the patients must be addressed with his or her names to make them feel more comfortable. The first appointment is usually limited to a checkup and getting acquainted with the clinic. A lot depends on the parent's communication with the child. Therefore, prior information to the parent is recommended so that they prepare the child well for the appointment. Strict instruction must be given to parents to not instill fear of dentists or injections to discipline the child. They must also be instructed to stay in the waiting area and watch their child and allow the dentist and the team to take complete control. Based on the behaviour and necessity of treatment, the dentist is authorised to decide when the procedure can be undertaken. Dental treatment is a team approach. The whole team works with a flexible plan for each visit. The initial visits are usually sufficient to gain the child's cooperation for diagnosis and treatment planning. The subsequent visits are planned for short periods, depending on how the child cooperates with the dentist. Apart from this, the essential part of the practice is to remember that children love to have fun, enjoy being admired and interact with others. Their world is built upon people, places, toys, games, cartoons, etc. We have to accept them as they are and more importantly, become a part of their world by communicating with them verbally and non-verbally. Gestures such as friendly eye contact, a handshake, a pat on the back or even applause encourage positive behaviour through positive reinforcement. Now that my plan is in place, is it time to execute it? We hope you had fun learning with us.